Hi, I'm Brian Nathanson from Clarity Product Management, and today we will be reviewing custom objects and sub-objects in the modern user experience. So what's new? Customers can now view and edit their custom objects and first-level sub-objects in the modern user experience. So there is now a new menu option for custom objects. You can see it over, over there on the left in the menu. Each master object gets its own tile. So in this case, I have a vendor contracts object that I've configured. It gets its own tile. When you click into the tile, you will get the custom object records. So you get a grid that has all of the custom object records in it. It is a generic grid, so it has all of the generic grid capabilities, the column picker, the save views, the configurable flyout, the configurable filter, the new, the new simple search, the group by capability, and the export to CSV. If you drill into one of the items, you will get the blueprint for that particular item or the layout for that particular item based on its blueprint. Drilling into a specific line gives you to the blueprint details page. Each sub-object for the object is available as a module. It'll actually bring you to whatever the, the first module is in the blueprint, same as the other behavior in the other parts of the system. But in this particular case, it's the details uh, is going to be the default first module, right? especially if you don't have any sub-objects. But every sub-object on that master object is available as a module and will be displayed as modules at the top. As mentioned, a new custom object navigate global right has been added. Users must be granted this new right before they can see any custom objects in the modern user experience. In addition, each custom object and sub-object must be enabled by the modern UX, for the modern UX by checking the new API enabled flag in the object definition. So you can see that in the screenshot there. Once checked, the flag itself disappears and the API attribute ID will appear for the object. In other words, this is a one-way trip. Once you enable the sub-object for the modern UX or custom object, uh, you can't un-enable it. So once you do that, it will then be enabled. All right. If you click on one of those sub-objects modules, you will then get taken to the grid view for that sub-object, also a generic grid. There is no blueprint for sub-objects, but you can use the configurable flyout as part of the generic grid capabilities. So if you wanted to configure what shows up on the flyout for that particular sub-object, you can do that and then save the view so that it shows that particular detail for that particular sub-object. To blueprint a custom object, you go into blueprints in the administration in the modern user experience, and you'll notice that the blueprints work exactly the same way as blueprints did for investments. There will be a standard blueprint for your custom objects in the system that is the default out of the box. The blue, standard custom object blueprint is just going to have name and ID pretty much in the blueprint. Okay, so, the, so that's what's happening there. In order to really create your own, you'll want to copy the standard blueprint, and then you can set it as the default so it gets applied to all of the Sub custom objects that you have. It, modifying it works exactly the same way as in other investment objects, and the only modules for custom objects right now are details and any available sub-objects. And now we'll go ahead and demonstrate all of that uh, for the modern user experience. So here I'm actually already in the menu option, but if I click somewhere else just real quickly to show how I get here, there is new, now an icon for custom objects. So I go into custom objects, you'll get again a tile for every one of your custom objects. In this case, I have one for vendor contracts. If we click into vendor contracts, then you now get a list of my vendors. Again, this is all configured, it did not ship out of the box. This is not something that is available from directly from us. This is something that was configured, and so you, you're, as an organization, would have configured your own. And so the idea here is that we have these custom object instances. This is a generic grid, so if I went ahead and said I highlighted an item and popped out the flyout, you can see that this has been configured uh, with some fields for what should be on the flyout. I can configure to add any additional fields that I might not have added, uh, and you can see all of that here, right? If I then uh, wanted to filter, I could filter. So if I wanted to just say, uh, I could simply quick pull back a quick uh, search on finding a particular item, or I could actually run a filter on a particular field. So if I said that I wanted to look up by a specific contact, I could just find Allison's projects by looking up based on the contact if I can spell Allison's name correctly. 
So the idea is that we can get back just what we're looking for. So again, all standard grid functionality. Uh, you can also export to CSV with your custom objects. So if you do that as well, you can export it to CSV and get out your uh, custom objects in that regard as well. Okay. Drilling into a custom object will take you to, a, to the blueprintable page, where in this case I have my details, and this is my layout for this particular object. And you'll notice I have these two sub-objects here, contractors and invoices. Clicking on contractors takes me to the list of contractors for this particular vendor. And so you can see I have five contractors for this vendor with a simple roll and rate. If I click on any one of them and hit details, it gives me the configurable flyout to show me the details about that particular sub-object. Okay. So we have this capability here, as well as the ability, again, to search, to filter, and to save views. Okay. So you have the ability to do that. If I click on the next sub-object over, the same principles apply. In this case, I have a few invoices for these folks with their appropriate hours and rate, and I can go ahead and take a look at what the flyout is for them as well. Again, all of it is exportable to CSV, so you can get that information out as you need. Okay. So that's how we have our objects and sub-objects. If we come on out to administration to show you how that all works, when you come into blueprints, one of the things that you can do is you can go ahead and search for your blueprints by either name or type. If we typed in type, you get this so it's lookup that allows you to pick. But in this case, you can see I have my vendor contract standard. This is the one that I mentioned just has name and ID in it. That's literally all there is. Um, but if you go into the one that I edited to actually get you that big layout, you can see that I've added all of my fields. And editing this is the same as in investments. You just simply use the edit to be able to drag the fields on that you're interested in. If you come over to modules, you can add or remove the modules for particular sub-objects or the details pane as well. And you can actually drag them around and in order uh, so that you can actually get them to show up accordingly. So if I drill in now, It'll take me to the contractors as the first module because it takes, again, whatever the first module is in order in the blueprint. Okay. And with that, that concludes the demonstration of custom objects and sub-objects in the modern user experience.